Hello students, uh, welcome to the course of uh, developmental biology. So in today's class, we will uh, talk about what developmental biology is and what will be the contents which we can discuss in this course. And uh, in this regard, before going into the details, I would like to ask all of you the basic question what is developmental biology? What do you think about developmental biology? What comes to your mind by hearing the term developmental biology? So developmental biology is a study of a process whereby a single cell, which is a fertilized egg, which further divides and it selectively activates the expression of the genes in order to produce a very complex organism and this complex organism is composed of many cell types so but when we started it was just a single cell which was a fertilized egg but when we when we went further this single cell gave rise to eyes this gave rise to the legs it gives rise to the the head and the other parts of the body right so what is this class all about so this is a, a a class where we will discuss how science was created and it was done we will discuss a lot about history long time back history how this uh, field originated and how it progressed over the time and again, we will talk about combination of multiple fields and uh, several different types of organisms uh, which uh, people uh, used over the years. And what are we going to discuss during this time, during this semester? So the most important questions um, in this, in this uh, subject are, how are we made? how did we come into existence and how different organs develop and they are shaped and they acquire unique identities and how cells talk to one another how because we are a complex human being how a nervous system coordinates with a muscular system for example how they talk to each other and then we will talk about different research techniques and approaches and how the experiments were done. That means the bench work which was done. So what do you, what comes across to your mind when we look at this? What is this exactly? This is nothing but the fertilized egg. This is the egg which is fertilized by all these sperms and the sperms which will be successful in fertilizing fertilizing would further uh, this will develop into a embryo and gives rise to a multicellular organism and this is the multicellular organism which started developing from the single cell so what are the different processes which are required to generate this multicellular organism so uh, to form an embryo what must occur so so initially the gametes must fuse that means the male and the female gametes must fuse and the cell should multiply that means uh, there will be from one cell more number of cells arise and which means growth and further there is a generation of asymmetry and then the axis determination happens um, thereby positional information comes into picture that means the body divides into anterior and posterior parts that means head part and the tail part and further it gives rise to dors dorsoventral parts that means back and the front part and as you go further you will see left and right and during this time the cells differentiate from uh, from one cell to multiple cells and then they give rise to different organs 
and the structures are built from the cells by the process called morphog morphogenesis and these animal cells they organize into sheets and they move and whereas in plant cells they form structures without movement so in this whole scenario differentiation is the central idea of development so all the cells in our body has the same dna content right but different cells express different genes so why a erythrocyte is different from a neuron both of them has the same dna why a neuron is a neuron and a erythrocyte is an erythrocyte because different cells express different genes right further when you look at the nature the nature supports incredible diversity of plants and animal body plants so you see we have a whale is different from a chimpanzee from a human and from a flower to a tree so you can see how diversity uh, is coming into picture and the nature supports this incredible diversity so when you look in the case of animal development uh, how the study of development changed over the years the questions are what kind of questions developmental biology were asking at that particular time point of time and uh, during this animal development how does the same genetic information results in different types of cells like we said just now how a pancreas could be different from a lung cell uh, further so how is this cell division regulated the mitosis versus the meiosis for example and how do the cells form ordered structures so from a single cellular to a multicellular organism how these cells differ and they form these different structures giving rise to a complete organism and once you get the complete organism how the germ cells develop how the male versus the female germ cells develop and how do changes in the development create new body forms and what changes are possible and how do each of these contribute to the study of development so we have comparative em em um, embryology which would be coming into picture evolutionary embryology teratology mathematical modeling and we will also study in the comparative embryology um, epigenesis versus preformation how what is epigenesis and what is preformation how they came into existence and how does the concept of germ layers support the epigenesis so so we have different layers of cells and how these different layers form different types of cells and how does the concept of induction fit in here so what is induction and how does induction fit in here when talking about comparative embryology we will also talk about what principles did one by articulate with respect to vertebrate development so uh, during the vertebrate development one by what did he articulate all about and then during the comparative embryology we will talk how general features of large group of animals appear earlier than the specialized features of the smaller group and how less general characteristics develop from more general characteristics and in this we will also study a particular type of a embryo instead of passing through adult stages of a lower form departs from departs more and more from it and how the embryo of higher animal is only like embryo of the lower animal how they are very similar in the early stages of embryonic development so we will also study about how 
have fate maps contributed to our understanding of development? And how have observations of embryo contributed to our understanding of evolutionary relationship between the different organisms? And during this evolutionary embryology, why it is why is the distinction between analogous and homologous structures important? And how in the teratology part, how malformations are different from disruptions? And apart from all these, yet all these organisms, which is a, a Arabidopsis or a Drosophila or a C. elegans or a mice, how they share the conserved developmental mechanisms that are evidence of their evolution uh, from a common ancestor. So our challenge is to understand both this diversity and the unity uh, among these animals. And for this, so the developmental biology is used um, using the following tools, which means they use cell biology, they use genetics, and they use the molecular biology.